Welcome back. So in this lecture, we're going to talk, we're going to continue talking about maximum likelihood, uh, but we're going to transition from what we've done in the last lecture, which was how to solve maximum likelihood problems analytically to asking the question, how can we solve this numerically, either for, uh, for times when there isn't an analytical solution or more generally often when we just don't uh, we would prefer to use numerical methods to find a solution rather than going through all the the, the rigor of, of finding an analytical solution, uh, because sometimes that can be mathematically tedious and, and you don't really need a general solution. You just need a, a specific number. Okay. So to review, uh, maximum likelihood worked by, we start by writing down the likelihood. Uh, we then took the logs. Uh, we then took the derivatives with respect to each parameter. We set those derivatives equal to zero, and we solved for each parameter. And th that estimate that we get when we solve for each parameter is known as the maximum likelihood estimate. We showed how we could apply this to, to simple problems like finding a mean and a standard deviation. We also used this to actually derive where uh, linear regression came from, focusing on, on univariate linear regression, but actually showing that um, the math to derive linear regression is actually not that complicated, uh, but also kind of in some ways pointing out that, you know, one of the reasons that uh, we have such a simple model for linear regression with such strong assumptions uh, about uh, constant variance, uh, you know, normally attributed error, uh, uh, no trends, like all the assumptions that go into linear regression are, are in some ways there because it gave us a nice easy analytical solution. Um, but not all of the problems we need to deal with are, are linear. And as we move on to more complicated models, uh, such as nonlinear models or, or more mechanistic models, uh, we need a way of fitting those models to data. Uh, and sometimes we can do this analytically. We can apply the, the nuts and bolts of uh, the analytical method for maximum likelihood. So if we had this problem, we have this curve here known as the michaelis menten curve. It has uh, the top parameter B1, which defines uh, the maximum, what it asymptotes to. Uh, B2 defines at what X value are you halfway between zero and the asymptote. So it's kind of known as the half saturation parameter um, because when your X value, in this case, light is equal to that value, then you uh, this or this, you know, yeah. So if light was at B2, it would be B2 over B2 plus B2, which would just give us one half. Um, and then we have an assumption about the error. Here we're assuming the error is normally distributed with mean zero and standard deviation sigma. So we could write that down as a likelihood, a probability of our growth data given uh, the michaels menten function predicting our mean and our choice of standard deviation. We could take the logs of that. Uh, logs of what's in the numerator should be fine. Logs of what the denominator, this whole denominator is just to the minus one power. So it just ends up being uh, log of the negative of this, the negative of the log of this. And then, uh, you know, the standard parts of our uh, regression model. Uh, we would uh, then take the derivatives we would solve for the parameters and it would be increasingly uh, tedious uh, relative to uh, what we've seen before because uh, the model is now more complicated and we have more, more things to solve for, but it's just a little bit more tedious algebra. You could do it. Um, but more broadly, the problem that we're gonna run into as models get more complicated uh, is this analytical approach to optimization, which has a lot of advantages in terms of giving you a general solution, giving you general understanding, uh, having uh, an exact solution that can be applied uh, to any new setting, um, comes at the cost of requiring us to go through a lot of math. Uh, and as problems get more complicated, uh, you may not have a, a closed form analytical solution uh, for for the maximum likelihood estimate, or it may exist, but it may become pro prohibitively difficult to solve for. So if you had a model with 
you know, uh, hundreds of equations, uh, which happens in environmental sciences, uh, it would be really hard to to kind of solve for this analytically. So this happens when you have nonlinear models, when you have models with uh, more more and more parameters, uh, and then models with more and more constraints. So if I have more than one type of data constraining a model, just as you see a really really simple example of that, uh, consider uh, the Weibull, which is a probability to density. It has uh, this parameter c here that we're going to focus on. And we might ask the question, you know, for a given x, what value of c maximizes this likelihood? So we've written down the likelihood. And here's a kind of a plot. You know, in, you know, intuitively, it's going to be somewhere a little bit below 1. But how do we you know, analytically derive for that? OK, we've written down our likelihood. We take our logs. That's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, log of a constant, uh, uh, log of x to the c minus 1 is just c minus 1 log of x. And then the exponent, uh, the log makes this exponent go away, and we just get a minus x to the c. Take the derivative. That's also pretty straightforward. So log of c, take the derivative of that is just 1 over c. c times log of x, take the derivative of that with respect to c, is just log of x minus 1 times log of x, derivative of that with respect to c. There's no c in there, so that's 0. And then the derivative of this uh, minus x to the c is just minus c x to the c minus 1. Cool. So writing down the logs, writing down the likelihood was easy. Taking the logs was easy. Taking the derivatives was easy. Now we set that equal to 0, and we solve. OK, problem. It is not possible to solve for C analytically. So even here, we have a, a pretty simple model, one parameter. And there's really, the, what you're going to run into is uh, you have this C in the exponent. And anything that you would do to try to get the C out of the exponent, such as taking logs, is going to then put these other terms into logs. And there's really just kind of no way to get this C in the denominator. C is a multiplication and C in the exponent to get all your c's on one side of the equation and all your other everything else on the other side of the equation. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're stuck at. So what I'm going to dive into in the next videos is thinking about how we can use computers to solve this problem. And it basically comes down to how we use computers to search through parameter space to find good solutions for us in efficient ways. Uh, because remember, the, the one of the fundamental advantages of computers is they don't get tired. They don't make mistakes. They'll just happily churn through uh, problems uh, for us. Thanks.